Hey guys, um, I've come to the conclusion that both of the hard drives are bad. Um, the one wouldn't spin up at all. I even took the top off of it and uh, tried spinning it by hand when I powered it up and it just wouldn't go. Something's wrong with the controller. And this one spins up, but it does not pass its own self-test. Um, the heads don't move or anything. They do come unlocked. I've had the top off this one as well. Since they don't work, there's no real point in worrying about getting dirt in there or anything. I was just trying to see if I could get them to read. But the heads don't move or anything, and it fails its self-test as well. So, and the power supply seems to be failing. I've replaced a couple capacitors in there, hoping to get it working um, with some used replacement ones that I had laying around. And it's helped it a little bit, but it tends to, once you've turned it on, it'll boot up. And then if you turn it off, then it won't turn back on again for 20 minutes or half an hour. So something's going on in there. But we're going to try one more time to fire it up before I relegate it back to the pile. Um, maybe someday I'll go through the power supply and rebuild it and look for a hard drive. But it's not on my top priority list. Uh, so I got a whole bunch of other stuff to look at. So I'm not going to spend much more time on this. But... We'll boot it up if the power supply will work and we will try it one more time to see what happens. Okay, there's the error for the hard drive controller failure, 10483. And then it'll go through the boot up process, boot from the disk to the setup routine. So the BIOS battery does seem to be working, although I will probably pull that out and turn it so that it will not go dead. <clears throat> Fix disk controller error, which I already knew. We'll just go through this. It doesn't even detect that there's a drive there. It does give some information, but it says there are zero drives if we view the configuration, 5 megs of RAM, um, 1.44 floppy. If you come down here, it says that there's a disk drive there in slot 4, um, but it does not find it. Um, if we, let's see. I think if we run this, it will tell us that there is no hard drive. It says zero. So the system board itself works. Well, that didn't give me what I want. Now it's going to restart anyway. Yeah, so anyway, um, I'm going to give up on this one for now. I won't get rid of it or anything, but um, I'm going to move on to something something else. Test out some hard drives and floppy drives and things like that and see what we got. So, moving on. Okay, guys. Um, up next, we have this Pentium board by AST. I've populated it with four 32 meg uh, memory modules for 128 megs and we've got a Western Digital Caviar 2850 um, 853.6 megabyte hard drive that's got Windows 98 loaded on it and the monitor, keyboard, mouse, everything's hooked up let's see what happens computer has lost its setup information. Well, that's probably true. <clears throat> Seems though it's 
1996 vintage and it's probably the original battery which is right there so we'll see what it says uh, it's a Pentium board I don't know if I said that I don't know what the speed is if it'll boot up maybe the BIOS will tell us 128 megs okay floppy drive is inc identified incorrectly really there is no floppy drive run let's see is f1 to continue or control alt escape control alt escape and there's the setup uh, let's see today is 10 uh, number lock 10 27 12 and it's about 1330 close enough uh, let's see floppy none okay um, hard drive let's see first hard disk type auto it says 32 heads uh, that's incorrect so we will user defined heads 16 cylinders uh, 16.54 sectors per track 63 right pre comp 0 landing zone 0 that should be good okay exit system setup Exit and save changes. And let's see what we get. Obviously, it won't save. You know, as soon as you shut the power sw power switch off, it's gonna forget all the information I just typed in there because the battery's no good anymore. But <clears throat> we'll at least see if we can get a, a Windows 98 welcome screen. Um, more than likely, there'll be all kinds of issues because this drive was not originally with this computer, so it probably won't know video and sound and all that, all that stuff all I care about is seeing if it if it'll pull the drive and start boot up procedure to run system setup I'd rather not hopefully it will work and black screen what's it doing Da, 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 da. I don't see anything. It's not hung up. I can still get the number lock to work. But apparently, it's not going to pull the drive, read the drive anyway. So, oh well. It made a valiant attempt. I'll get another board and we'll try again. Okay, we're set up for test number two. Um, this is basically the same board. Um, same maker, same everything. I think this was. I think I had three of these computers. I've only put 32 megs of RAM or two of the 32 megs in here. Uh, maybe the boot up process, testing the memory, will be a little quicker. But same hard drive, same everything else. Here we go. I have video. There we are. It has the same as the other one. The computer has lost its setup information. Yep, 64 megs. It's a little bit faster. Yes, I know. Alt Control Escape. It's going to tell me. Alt Control Escape. There's boot up. Uh, 10, uh, 27, 12. Oop, what happened here? Oh, numbs lock. 10, 27, 12. And we'll say 1338. Oh, oh. Uh, floppy drive. None. 
hard drive. 32. Say 32. See, now that's not right. Okay. Has the 16. Cylinders is 1654. It might be that it doesn't like 1654. See, that's probably the problem. It's uh, the drive is too big. So we'll try that, but it's not going to like it. But we'll see if it boots up to the same point. Test the memory, and then try to go to the drive. I didn't catch that with the other one, but I'll bet it did the same thing. I typed in the um, <clears throat> cylinders, which is 1654, but it won't allow 1654. I'll have to scrounge around and see if I've got a smaller hard drive that's got something on it. But this is a good enough test for now. That's seriously not going to like the hard drive, so. It's probably going to hang the same as the other one did right here. Yep. Alright, another valiant effort. I'll pass that one as good. Moving on. Alrighty, now we have a Pentium 166 megahertz. Uh, it's MMX, same power supply, there's no onboard video, so I put in a known good VGA card, PCI slot card, same hard drive, although I do have to hook this cable up, or it will never work. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> there. And there is no power switch. Um, but this says it's the power switch, so I'm going to try touching these two together. Aha! And we have video. Check it out. Pentium MMX CPU at 166 megahertz. Testing the memory. 131. Detected the hard drive. CMOS checks on that because there's no um, settings. Defaults loaded. Delete to enter setup. Ah, been a while since I saw an award BIOS. Wednesday, January 1st, 1997. Wasn't that nice? Okay, how do we change? Page up and page down. October 27th, 2012, uh, let's see, we'll say that's close enough, those are all auto, that is going to be none, okay, BIOS features, Okay. Chipset features. Okay. Close enough. All right. Let's see. S save and exit. Now let's see if she'll boot. Memory test. On the hard drive, Western Digital Caviar AC2850F, and there she goes. Of course, there's no mouse, so there's probably a PS, PS2 connector on the board that requires a header, um, but I didn't really look at it. So yeah. Yeah, see, it uh I think Windows just crashed. 
Yeah, I did lock it up because the uh, the hardware on the board is not what the uh, OS decided it wanted to see. So let's see if I short these two switches together if it'll shut off. Did. All right, so that one tests good. Moving on. All right, so this is a 486DX33. Um, the note says it boots fine, so we'll see. I've got a good ISA VGA card in here. There are no PCI slots. Um, there's one 8 bit and uh, one, two, three, four, six 16 bits, as well as the extended. I believe this makes these 32 bit slots. Um, populated it with eight 1 meg 30 pin sims. And see what happens. There's no mouse port on this either, just a keyboard. So this will boot up, hopefully, and we can get to the CMOS. If this is a good system, um, either this one or if I can find one that's um, ISA as well as PCI, I want to make a test bed because I have a bunch of uh, cards and, and stuff that I want to test. But that'll be another video, so here goes nothing. Hey, we got something. 93, 8 megs okay. CMOS battery state low. ATI Graphics Ultra. This is also AMI BIOS, 1993. Press F1 to resume. Unset up utility. Well, I haven't seen that, that set up utility in a long time. Yes, I know. Uh, look at that. Defaulted to January 1st, 1980. <laughs> Let's see if we can set this. Will it go to 19, 2012? It went there. I don't know if it'll like it. And we'll set this to... Yeah, let's say 1400, close enough. Hard disk C, that's correct. Not installed, not installed. Floppy drive A is not installed. Okay. We'll escape. Let's see. Advanced CMOS setup. Okay. <coughs> Above one meg test. All right, looks good. What's the chipset? All right, light to CMOS and exit. Yes, go. Testing the memories. Two hundred fifty-six K of cache, thirty-three meg CPU clock, one twenty-eight K shadow RAM. No CD, no C, no D, no serial, no parallel, no nothing. Drive not ready. Okay. All right. Well, that one works. It's even got a little red light right here. It's on. I don't know why. So, that's a good working bird. Shut her down. So, that might be a good one for a test bed. Um, probably will pull that battery off of there because they do corrode and that will uh, cause issues with the main board. But I got a couple more to do and then that'll be it. Okay, we got another 486DX. Um, it says it boots to CMOS error. We will see. Uh, it's got some corrosion in it. Camera can see that a little bit there. Green. It's pretty bad around the battery and stuff too. But I only threw four megs in this one. Uh, see what happens. You get any kind of life out of it. Yeah. Got video.
Four megs good. Run setup utility. F1. Uh, we don't have any keyboard. Maybe that jack. That jack was kind of corroded here, so we may not have any keyboard connection. Yeah, this, it doesn't. It, it pulled the keyboard, and it got lights to blink, but it won't. It doesn't respond. So that one's eh, so-so. Moving on. All right, we have a Intel 486DX4, um, 100 megahertz processor, uh, PCI got 432 meg sims in there um, says it 46 uh, says it fails boot so I wrote bad on there <clears throat> um, but I moved the video card over to the first slot and now it seems to work I don't know why so I've connected up the hard drive and we'll see what it does Okay, mismatch. Yeah, we know that. Keyboard works. Ooh, fancy BIOS. Okay, how do you move plus and minus? Okay, close enough. Floppy A is none. Floppy B is none. Master disk. Oh, does it have an auto? No. Okay, so we have to find uh, 1654 cylinders. Oh, we can just do it in here. Oh, let me just type them. Oh, yes, that will. 16. 1654. Enter. Head 16. Enter. WP comp 0. Landing zone 0. Sectors. 63 and 14 mags uh, close enough okay advance okay set okay close enough Okay, so how do we get out? Escape, save changes, and exit. Now this doesn't have a mouse connector either, but uh, see what she does. This is wait. Processor is pretty warm. I don't think it has a fan connector. And I can see. Probably a hard drive controller failure. Well, it boots anyway. It says it's a 100 megahertz clock, so. Alrighty then. Looks like the board's okay. <clears throat> well, I don't know about the hard drive controller.
but anyway that's it for this um, I'm gonna try to get a, a system running that I can test different boards and stuff in this might be the one I don't know this also says 16-bit ISA as well as PCI slots and an AGP so and I think this is a 32-bit ISA so it's a good rounded board if I can get the uh, IDE controller working or make sure that it's working then uh, it might be the one to use so anyway thanks for watching and tune in next time